Welcome. It's uh, good to see everybody. Um, it's good to be here in person. Um, this is my first time that I've come to the, uh, to the church uh, at home for a number of reasons, my dad being one of those. Uh, and uh, so it's good to see all of you and, of course, those who are here uh, online. Uh, good to be sharing this time with you as well. Um, so allow me to introduce myself. Uh, I'm David Cloak. I am married to Sandy Cloak, and we've been attending NAC since uh, September of 1987. Um, so that's a lot of math to do. Uh, we have five children, uh, four of our own, uh, Andrew, Michael, Sarah, and Daniel. And then we've been blessed with a, a bonus child, and uh, her name's Christine. And so among the three married children, there are 11 children, and so we see ourselves with 11 grandchildren. So a um, little bit of background there. Um, now, I'm about to tell you what I do for a living, and uh, I generally get one of three responses when I tell people what I do. Uh, none of them are encouraging. First response I get is absolute silence. Um, the second one is a joke uh, or an awkward statement. And the third is I get put to work. And, and it's probably not unlike you, Jonathan, who sometimes gets asked, uh, you know, what do you do? Uh, I'm a pastor, kind of shakes the mood, right? I, I don't know which one of us would probably have the harder time because, hey, Dave, what do you do? I'm a registered psychotherapist. Okay, you hear the pin drop, or the jokes about my couch, or, hey, Dave, I'm kind of depressed and I'm anxious, and I'm just kind of wondering if you could, you know, go to work. Now, some people think I can read their minds, and um, that, that's not a joke. They actually really do. And so today, if you're sitting on the kind of way outside, it's your lucky day, because normally I would wander this whole platform, but I'm kind of stuck right here behind this plexiglass. And I didn't realize how much reflection there is. I can kind of see myself. It's kind of like, oh, yeah, everything looks good. Uh, but you people, the lights are too bright, so I'm not going to be reading your minds. And, and you people at home, well, you know, it's kind of like I feel like I'm in the research lab and, uh, you know, there's this glass and you guys are kind of on the other side. And is there really somebody there? I'll believe there is. Um, and uh, we're all good until we go out in the parking lot and then they say you can look through to the soul through somebody's eyes, mask or no mask. Listen, I like to use humor in my work. I like to use a little bit of humor when I'm speaking. And it adds oxygen to our brains. It relaxes us. And it may just help you get through my talk today because we don't get coffee, tea, and cookies to help us along the way. So let me take a look at today's one anothering. A little introduction here. This is definitely a challenging topic. Um, we're going to talk about what I consider to be probably the most difficult of the one anotherings, uh, one in which we often feel helpless, uh, where it's hard to know if we're effective, um, where it tends to require a longer investment, and where it involves building relationships, and it's even hard to define. Now, I was able to pick the topic I wanted, and I knew it wasn't going to be an easy one, but I think I picked it because I have a passion uh, for this carrying one another's burdens. And it's a hope that it, we as a body of believers can get better at it. Now, if you want a really strong opinion about this, Larry Crabb, who wrote in the 90s in his book Connecting, presented this idea. I think we'll just wait. Yep, there it is. If the church was doing its job, we wouldn't need therapists. So my alternative title to my message today is how to ruin your career in 25 minutes. Well, let's take a look at the key verse. The one anothering topic is found in Galatians 6. 
And the verse that I'm focusing on is carry each other's burdens. And in this way, fulfill the law of Christ. Yeah, we're getting started and, and maybe some people are already shifting in their seats. All right. Now, I'd like to introduce this today with a video. The video is called Not Today. Some of you have seen it. You might be familiar with it. The uh, Center for Addiction and Mental Health produced this video. And the reason that I picked it is uh, to kind of show, even in a very, very difficult topic, the power of community and the simplicity of giving strength to someone. Now, I want to acknowledge something here. Our family, the Clouk family, uh, experienced the losses of a nephew by suicide in 2008. And I know that there are other people in our NAC family who have been touched by this particular issue. And I just want you to know that if some of this just brings up some hurt, some pain, some loss, that you're not alone, that we're in this together. But why don't you take a look at this video here with me? Give me a word. Any word, Wrong and one. I show you. Wrong one. There we go. Not today. I'm here. You can tell me anything. I see you. We're in this together. Breakthroughs are happening. Treatments are evolving. The stats can change. Society can change. We can all say, not today. Not today. Not today. Not today. Not today. That stat that was presented there is sobering. But if we all say not today together, it's easier to say it when we're alone. And when we carry each other's burdens and we feel like we're in it together, it's easier for those times when we do feel alone. The statements that were made, I'm here. Can you tell me, or I'm here, you can tell me anything. I see you. We're in this together. There is hope. And so I want to go back to uh, our key verse, carry each other's burdens, and in this way, fulfill the law of Christ. You're going to see that a few more times today, and, and I kind of came up with a new word. I'm kind of psychotherapizing you. Uh, what that means is, if you don't get it consciously, I'm going to put that up so many times that subconsciously you're going to pick it up. Um, but a little side note here, uh, when I got the email about this topic and I picked it, um, I uh, got the, uh, the notes and there was this key verse and there was a typo. And this typo uh, put that the key verse was Galatians 5.2, not Galatians 6.2. Here's what Galatians 5.2 says. If you let yourselves be circumcised, Christ will be of no value to you at all. All right, now besides being utterly confused, <laughs> I really had no idea how I was going to include that into today's topic. <laughs> Jonathan and I talked it out, and, and he said I can deal with it on another time, and I'm going to say, Jonathan, it's all yours, okay? <laughs> so, this, uh, this verse um, is found in a series of five verses, and... Uh, Oh, it is legible up there on that screen. I can't read it there, so I'm just going to read it this way. Brothers and sisters, if someone's caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. But watch yourselves, or you also may be tempted. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. If anyone thinks there's something when they are not, they deceive themselves. Each one should test their own actions. Then they can take pride in themselves alone without comparing themselves to someone else. For each one should carry their own load. Now, um, if I had five weeks, I could do a whole series on those five verses. 
All right? But lucky for you, I don't have five weeks, and I won't try to do it today. But here, get ready for the fastest five-point sermon. Number one, gently restore brothers and sisters who are in sin. Verse two, having been restored, continue to carry each other's burdens to fulfill the law of Christ. Verse three, don't be prideful to think that you are better as in more righteous or better as in above carrying another person's burdens or better as in I don't need help to carry mine. Number four, mind your own business and don't compare yourself with others. And number five, take care of your own issues, your biases, judgments, and rebellions. Okay, so I don't have time to deal with all that, but what I do have time for is verse two. And I want to drill down into this verse. Now, you got a little hint of it, but uh, I was going to try to do this with, you know, an accent. And although I do quite a bit of acting, I suck at having somebody else's accent. I'm inconsistent. So I figured I needed to let the guy who kind of had this accent and presented it in the movie uh, do it for us. And for some of you, you may not recognize this movie. It's called My Big Fat Greek Wedding. It came out in 2002. So for some of you, uh, you have been you know, born after that date. Um, but uh, let's take a little look at this clip here, okay? Give me a word. Any word, and I show you how the root of that word is Greek. Okay? How about arachnophobia arachna that comes from the greek word for spider and phobia is a phobia is mean fear so fear of spider there you go okay mr portocollis how about the word kimono uh -huh. kimono 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 <laughs> of course kimono is come from the Greek word kimona, is mean winter. So, what do you wear in the winter time to stay warm? A robe. You see, robe, kimono, there you go. <laughs> All right, so without doing the accent, Carrie, I think we went back to the beginning. <laughs> Can you find the slide there, Rex? Anyway, so it's going to come up, and it's going to come up with two Greek words, because carry, it comes from the Greek word bastazo, to take up or even to take away or carry off. Burden, it comes from the Greek word baros, which means weight. So carry burden to take away weight. There you go. <laughs> Does it mean I lend a helping hand? Does it mean I take out my neighbor's trash? Or is it something more? Something heavy? If you guys need the flash drive again, I've got it here. But... So I'm going to oh, stop for a second. Okay. Continue on. Definition of burden. All right. Anything that threatens to crush the joy of our faith, whether a tragedy that threatens to make us doubt God's goodness or a sin that threatens to drag us down into shame and judgment. I think the next slide is the one I'm on. There we go. So the burden here from that we carry is a loss of joy. It's a loss of hope. They're feelings of discouragement, feelings of disappointment, and feelings of loss of identity, and sometimes guilt and shame. It is a burden. It's something that weighs down on us. Let's look at Carrie. We're not called to pull others, others out of pain and suffering. We're called to walk alongside them and to help carry their burdens. So that means jumping into the trenches and grabbing the shovel. We are meant to help carry the load. We're not supposed to tell them why the load is there. We're not to give them advice on to how to carry it better. We're supposed to get in there and help carry. So, carry each other's burdens. Kind of five pieces here. Number one is to take away or carry off the weight someone else is experiencing. 
Two, bringing some form of relief and comfort to someone else's challenging situation. Three, it suggests that it's something that someone can't carry on their own. Four, it it's, puts extreme strain on our spiritual capital. And the last one there is it's a weight that presses down on us. Now, the second half of the verse talks about fulfilling the law of Christ. And this verse in Mark uh, is the most important commandment. Uh, it's a revision of all the other commandments, and it's revised by none other than Jesus himself. And so love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than the, these. And the passage in Matthew that talks about the same actually says law and prophets hang on these two commandments. So you're fulfilling the law of Christ when you carry another's burdens but you know what? You also fulfill the law of Christ when you allow someone to carry yours. This passage in Ephesians lists the character qualities of a burden carrier. It's living worthy of the calling. Love God. Love yourself. Love others. It's kind of like that song, you know, love, love, love. All you need is love, love, love. And if you don't know that song, ask your parents. Okay? But we're to be completely humble. We're to be gentle. We're to be patient. And we're to be loving while we help each other's burdens. You see, fulfilling the law of Christ is not really law-driven at all. Rather, it is out of this character of grace and love and humility. And if we're doing it for any other reason, it's probably not going to be effective. It's kind of like the Pharisees in Jesus' time that made all these behaviors a very legalistic and obligatory thing to do. It became a list of have-tos instead of being driven by our hearts to extend out to others that journey with us through our life. All right, so that's kind of all the breakdown, digging down in it. Now let's take a look at how we make this happen. So, number one, we want to learn how to care. One more click and we'll be there. And um, caring, uh, it, it's something interesting when I was researching this. One another things is about what we do with each other as believers. All right, there's a one another, there's a reciprocity to this. If we're talking about what we're supposed to be doing to people who don't yet know Christ, it's about us going to them. It's feeding the hungry, being a cup of cold water, bringing clothing, all right? It's, it's very one directional. But to care a one anothering, to carry each other's burdens, we need to be around each other. We need to get to know each other. We need to see each other. We need to be engaged with each other. Number two, we need to look. We need to make it our business, not the latest gossip, not the latest, you know, uh, rumors going around. No, we need to look, and we need to look for broken hearts. We need to look for broken bodies. We need to look for broken relationships within our community. A third thing we need to do is we need to ask. We need to be willing to increase our load, and we need to not wait to be asked. All right, we need to initiate carrying other people's burdens. And the fourth would be just do it. Fulfill the law of Christ. We don't get any kind of commendation for good intentions. We don't get any points for understanding concepts. We get them when we're just doing. And John 13, 17 says, now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. All right, question, why don't we do it? Some of these are hard to look at. The first one would be, it's not convenient. It's not my job description. Listen, I'm too busy with my own problems and schedules. Um, I work long hours. I have my own interests. Like, this is not usually happening at a convenient time. I can tell you that. Carrying others' burdens is not convenient. Second reason, it isn't a crisis. 
I said I've been with NAC since 1987, so I've seen a lot of things over the years here. And one of the things that this church is awesome about, they're really good about, is being there, showing up in a crisis. There's an immediate response when needs are presented. A few phone calls and things happen. But our church does have a bit of a challenge in being there in the long haul. And sometimes it doesn't look like a crisis to us. But if we don't go and listen and if we don't ask, we don't realize how hard some of these emotional challenges, mental health challenges are to deal with. And so we need to be thinking as a congregation, how can we be there for the long haul? The third one is that it's relational, not functional. There's the saying, people don't care about what you know until they know that you care. All right? I think I'm stealing that one from Jonathan, actually. All right? Carrying one another's burdens is personal. It's it's not just practical. Sometimes it is, but it's always personal. It's always about investing in a person, not necessarily investing in their problems. Another reason is that we get the sense that it's none of my business. The community in Acts... They knew each other's business. They knew how to sell things, but distribute them and be concerned about the community. And the last reason that we don't do it is because it's just plain awkward. It is. Because sometimes we just don't know how to help. Sometimes we don't know if we're helping or we're making it better or we're making it worse. But helping isn't the issue here. It is about engaging. Now, what does it look like? This one's a little bit more fun. Let me show you some of the ways that um, it looks, all right? So first one is look. Look for it, not wait for it, okay? Look for it. Don't wait for church. Right now it's really difficult because we've got COVID restrictions, but don't wait until you see somebody here and say, I missed you. Take a look around when you're here and see who isn't here and call them up and I say, I missed you when you weren't in church. There's times people haven't been here for weeks and then they come here and somebody says, I missed you. You know what they're thinking? Really? Like, what does that mean? I haven't been here for three weeks. I haven't heard from you. All right? So most burdened people don't have the strength to reach out. When we reach out, we're saying, I see you and I care. So be the church. It's not complicated. Just look for a burdened person and join them. All right. Second, be present. All right? I like the next slide because it's a cute little picture. All right, now, wonderful couple here. He's trying to help her run the skateboard. I love that woman. Courageous, adventurous, risk-taking. He's cheering her on. But look at the question over here. Kids were asked, what does it mean to love someone? Now, you know as soon as you ask a kid something, there's going to be some good answers, right? All right, here's the first one. When a girl puts on perfume and a boy puts on shaving cologne and they go out and they smell each other. Here's the second one. Life is like a little old woman and a little old man who are still friends, get this, even after they know each other so well. The next one. It's when mommy gives daddy the best piece of chicken. Now let's take a look at the next one. This is a bit of a story. This is a story where a four-year-old child whose next-door neighbor was an elderly gentleman who had recently lost his wife And the four-year-old, upon seeing the man crying, goes into the old man's backyard, climbs on his lap, and just sat there. And when later his mother asked him what he said to the neighbor, the little boy said, nothing. I just helped him cry. So, we need to keep it simple. Here's a few helpful little statements that you can use. I don't know why this happened to you. No one should have to go through this. And if you can do that much, 
You can remain present and become agents of God's compassion. Another way, that's too much for one person to bear. Maybe between the two of us, we can do it together. Or simply using a couple of questions that draw out two questions. Can you tell me more? Can you tell me about, and can you tell me what that's like for you? Those are two things that will give you all kinds of insight into a person's heart. Be curious, be interested. All right, the next one is in community. And I got a little picture here coming up next. Isn't that a great group of people? All right, this was our November check-in and it got posted by one of the participants. I, truly, I wasn't sleeping, okay? It was one of those times where the camera went off and my eyes were closed. And the staff didn't put me up to this. I'm, I'm doing a little plug here just all on my own, but Jonathan, you can pay me later, okay? What I want to point out here is my wife and I have attended two check-ins. And I want to just really anonymously give you the list of things shared. All right, ready? Aging parent issues, isolation from social circles, job loss, isolation from extended family, cancellation of events, aging parent issues, undefined chronic illnesses, financial challenges, rescheduling of events, defined chronic health issues, transitions, oh, and did I mention aging parent issues? Okay, workplace challenges, community health challenges. On top of that, emotions like frustration, discouragement, disappointment, and on top of that, how are you doing with COVID? Two one-hour group meetings. Do you, do you think we have opportunities to carry each other's burdens? Do, do, do you think this is a one anothering that that we need to get better at, that we need to be aware of? For sure it is. And that wasn't a hard sell. Jonathan, you can see he was the one staff member leading ours wasn't sitting there and, and driving it home and going, come on, you guys, tell me what's going on. It was just a very casual conversation. And out of that, we were able to know each other a little better, but we were able to carry each other's burdens. So those of you who haven't signed up for the check-ins, you got one more chance. And you know what? The worst that can happen is if you really don't like it, it's called exit meeting, okay? Like, done. You're out of it. So there's some lists there, and I think if you've gotten the email, you know that it's there. Um, what does it look like? Sometimes it's practical. Nothing said, no fanfare. And, and I share that most of you or some of you are aware of uh, my son Andrew's accident um, a couple years ago, and um, just days after the accident, Andrew was in Sunnybrook. We come home after being at the hospital all day. There's a box on my porch. We open it up and it's full of plastic containers, full of Irish stew and soup. Just a little note, this is what's in it. Hope it helps. And it was from one of my hockey buddies. All right, my hockey buddy, I'm pretty sure it doesn't have anything to do with faith. Well, maybe he's got a little bit of Catholic background and he's got an Irish history. But the point is, is that he just did it and just left it there. Sometimes it's spiritual, praying with someone, sharing scripture. But how do you know how to pray if you haven't listened? And sometimes it's being active, just going and taking care of somebody's children. Just saying, hey, you want to go for a walk? You don't even have to say anything during the walk. You're just present with somebody. And it brings me to my last, what does it look like? And that's a listen. I've had the opportunity to work with some First Nation communities, and they have taught me a thing or two about listening. As a therapist, I'm supposed to know how to do that. It's kind of like therapy 101. And, and I went up to that community and the, <laughs> I lost one of my clients, one of my first clients up there, and I got feedback from, his mother that basically said, the therapist talks too much. Okay, that's humbling. 
And I talked to the nurse up there that's been working in indigenous communities for about eight years, and here, here was her advice. Don't say anything, and just listen and be present. And when your head's about to explode, start counting to 10, slowly, right? Listening. And they put such high value on being present with somebody, sitting with someone in silence, all right? Now, I'd like to, uh, to just read, and this wasn't written by an indigenous person, but the atrocities that have happened, sometimes this is the response. And Megan Devine is a psychologist in New York, and she's written books on grief. But here's what she wrote. Here's what I most want you to know. This really is as bad as you think. No matter what anyone else says, this sucks. What has happened cannot be made right. What is lost cannot be restored. There's no beauty here. Inside this central fact, acknowledgement is everything. You're in pain. It can't be made better. The reality of loss is far different from what others see from the outside. There is pain in this world that you can't be cheered out of. You don't need solutions. You don't need to move on from grief. You need someone to see your grief, to acknowledge it. You need someone to hold your hands while you stand there in blinking horror, staring at a hole that was your life. Some things cannot be fixed. They can only be carried. We have that opportunity as believers to help carry things that often can't be fixed. Okay. Last time you're going to see this verse. So if it isn't in yet, maybe mark it in your, you know, on app Bible verse and keep it handy. But I'm going to go on just to one more thing here. A few more minutes. I called it the bonus reel. However, um, I think I would be a mess, a miss if I didn't mention this one other aspect. So carrying one another's burdens is not about taking away pain. It is about being with each other in relationship. And Rex, if you can go to the next slide there, that would be great. Carrying simply means um, to hold one another up. And as we do this, here's the opportunity. We can point each other to Christ who has called us to share our burden with him. He calls us, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and I'm humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He is gentle and he's humble. And when we see in this next verse, he is able. It's probably one of my favorite passages in all of Scripture. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. I just have a few more things to say. I'm going to ask the worship team to, to come on up. Um, I probably should have invited you a few moments ago. But the part that comes out of this, he is able, is the emphasis about how wide, how deep the love of God is. If we're going to carry each other's burdens, we need to tap into that. We need to come with love and be able to express that in a way that people experience. But we also need to help people see God, the one who is able to carry us. That passage ends with what is often, um, uh, what do you call it, a benediction? Uh, Jonathan, you're going to come up in a few minutes just to finish up. But this is the verse 
Think of this. Now to him, God, who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask, okay, that's not too mind-blowing, but how about more than all we imagine, according to his power that it's work within us? To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations. Thanks for listening, folks.